Okay, so this video uh, is going to discuss a few of the rules and the five common resonance patterns. And then uh, the next video will show maybe a few tips and tricks and, and how to actually draw some resonance structures. So as we learned in our, the text, uh, the, first, the first tip, or I'm sorry, the first rule is to avoid breaking single bonds. So if we look at this molecule here, it's uh, called pentane. That's not important right now, but if you want to think about naming it, we can uh, look at five carbons here. Uh, there is no opportunities for resonance. There are no lone pairs. There are no double bonds. And so we're not going to take a single bond like this and break it to form something like this. And these would be the appropriate uh, formal charges. This carbon would have a problem because, as you see, it started with two hydrogens. They did not go anywhere when we're drawing the resonance. And so they're still there on the product, except now we've added another bond. So this carbon here that I highlight with this black dot has five bonds to it, and that's a problem. That's a pentavalent carbon. And that's a good way to lose um, several points on an exam or a quiz. So don't break single bonds. That's number one. Number two, don't exceed the octet. And we just broke that rule already with our first example. So I'll give you another example that doesn't break the first rule, but does break this rule here. We might look at this molecule. This is called butene. And say, well, there's a double bond there. Maybe we can do some resonance. And maybe our first inclination is to move the pi bond into the middle section. Again, we need to remember that there is a CH2 right here. And there's a CH right here. So if we move that pi bond, there are still two hydrogens attached. We've created another pi bond here. There's an H. So this carbon is fine. Here we have the problem, and I hope you observe that. We've got some formal charges. I still have a pentavalent carbon on this, on this, uh, this new drawing here. So I've broken this rule. Don't exceed the octet. Uh, and primarily... Basically, if you can follow these two rules, you will be able to draw proper resonance structures. These are the ones we have to keep in mind. Don't break any single bonds. Look at the double bond. So the second part of the, the, the two bonds here, the pi bond, is the one that we can use to move around. So let's look at uh, some resonance patterns. Allylic lone pair is the first pattern. This is referring to a situation like this. Here I have a molecule, or rather an ion. I have a lone pair, and it's in the allylic position. The allylic position is the carbon that is directly next to any alkene. So there can be up to four allylic positions for every alkene. In this case, there are two allylic positions, and one of them has a lone pair. So this is the allylic lone pair resonance pattern. We're going to use the lone pair, and we're going to use the double bond to affect a resonance arrow push here. We're not going to break any single bonds. We're not going to exceed the octet for any atoms. So the first arrow implies the creation of this double bond. The second arrow implies the creation of this lone pair. And then there's a negative charge over here. You'll notice that we had one negative charge to start with. We still have a negative charge. So be sure that your charges balance after you've uh, completed your resonance arrow push and made your new drawing. Also be sure that you've not exceeded the octet for any of the atoms. There's a single hydrogen attached here. I'm not going to draw it. It looks, it'll looks it get uh, rather cl cluttered. But I can put in this hydrogen on the middle carbon. And so we see that the middle carbon has two bond, a double bond, a single bond to carbon, and a single bond to H, and it still does 
for our second drawing. So that's a proper arrow push for allylic lone pair. The second one, allylic cation, it's basically the same thing, except instead of a lone pair, we have an empty orbital on the carbon or some other atom. So here we have a cation, and this is really, I think of this as a hole that can receive electrons. Whereas before we were pushing the lone pair away, now we're going to fill in this cation. So this is a hole, you could think of it as a hole in your garden, uh, you, you get your spade and you dig up some dirt from somewhere else and you fill in that hole. And this requires only one arrow and it results in this pattern, or I'm sorry, this uh, structure. We'll see that there's a new cation somewhere else, right? Just like in your garden, if you dug some dirt up from somewhere, there's going to be less dirt there. Whether that's a hole or a hill that you smoothed out, uh, there's less dirt. Here there's less electrons on the left side of the molecule because we had them moving in this arrow push here. So again, the charges balance. We have not exceeded the octet. We in fact have a uh, six electrons instead of eight in the cation, but that's, that's what a carbocation is, so that's not the end of the world. The third is a lone pair next to a cation. And so we can look at an example here. Here I'll make an oxygen with three electrons. It has a negative charge, as we know from our formal charge discussion. There's a cation on this middle carbon right here. And the lone pair next to a cation, we can use a lone pair again. We're not breaking a single bond. We're not exceeding the octet. This cation means there's only six electrons around the carbon. We can add two more without any issue. And then the product looks like this. And in this case, there are no formal charges because I've taken extra electrons from the negative space, added them to the cation, and thus I have a fully neutral molecule. So I've created this pi bond right here. The fourth um, rule is pi bond between two elements with differing electronegativity. So basically not a carbon to carbon, but a carbon to oxygen or a nitrogen to carbon, uh, something like that. So let's look at uh, an example of that. So here is a functional group called an imine. We have a nitrogen with a single bond to carbon and a double bond to a different carbon. And of course this carbon and the nitrogen have different electronegativities. And we know uh, from chapter 1 and chemistry 112 that there's a dipole moment that uh, looks like that. Uh, the negative charge is pointed towards the N. We can even put a delta minus on the N, delta plus on whatever is attached to the N, including this dotted carbon. And so this tells us which way the arrows should flow. The electrons should go from the carbon to the nitrogen. And so a single arrow in this case can help us with our resonance structure. Now we have two lone pairs. I've just removed electrons from the carbon, so it should be a plus charge. I've added electrons to the nitrogen. I have a negative charge. And again, one arrow uh, allows us to do this fourth uh, resonance pattern, a pi bond between two elements with differing electronegativities. And the last one is probably the easiest. Anytime we see a six-membered ring that has alternating pi bonds, one resonance structure that you should think of immediately is simply to rotate those pi bonds around that ring. You might say, well, it, we come up with the same structure. Yeah, it is very similar, but this resonance structure, even though it looks very similar to what we started with, helps us understand that these electrons are actually delocalized all around that six-membered ring.